Hello there, my name's Scott. Today I'm going to be doing a review on the Richmond Hybrid, which I received from www.richmondvapors.com. Before I start though, I must point out I did receive it free of charge for the purpose of conducting a review, but my opinion of product remains true on its necro as always. Okay, let's go straight ahead and show in a bit more detail. Okay, so here I have the Richmond Hybrid, and I'm sure some people are looking at this and thinking, why is it one finish here and a completely different finish here? And I believe the reason they sent it out to me like this was to just demonstrate the two different uh, finishes that are available. So you either have a choice of all matte finish, which is this one here, or all polished finish, which is uh, this finish here. I don't think uh, there's an option for having a mixture of the two different finishes. And I can't see many people going for that option anyway, because it looks a, a little bit like um, sort of one of Frankenstein's creations. So not my cup of tea at all in the looks department. If it was all matte or all polished, I think it would look great, but uh, the two finishes together just uh, don't work well. Okay, so uh, what I'll do now then is just uh, go through some of the main features, and then I'll take it all apart, show you how it fits together, and then show you how I've been getting my one all set up. So the Richmond Hybrid is made out of stainless steel. I'm not too sure what grade of steel is used. I can't find that information on the website, unfortunately. But the overall build quality is surprisingly really good, especially when you consider the uh, the price. I think it's um, $120, or in UK money, that's going to be around, at a guess, of £80, £85. And for £85, you get a stainless steel device, really good build quality, excellent threading on there, got some really nice features. And uh, you know, for that price, it's uh, quite a bargain, really. On the base, you're going to find the bottom button switch. And as you can see, you have your serial number laser engraved onto it, as well as the uh, company logo there. The button itself is made out of copper, which has then been gold plated, and all the battery contacts inside the uh, Richmond Hybrid are also gold plated copper. Now, the, uh, the button itself works extremely well. You've got a, uh, a very nice tension there, feels a little bit on this sort of spongy side, which is uh, something that I quite like. You can press it right on the very edge, it fires up, you can press it right in the middle, and it's going to fire up every single time. Now, the uh, locking ring here isn't aesthetically pleasing to my eye. I think it looks a little bit on the ugly side. However, it works exceptionally well. Give that a spin, it's now locked. Give it a spin, you can now vape. And as you can see, the, uh, the button itself has ventilation holes there. So if he was very unfortunate, now the battery venting gases, and those gases do have a means to escape. Now, the main body is made up of these two different length tubes. And uh, hopefully you can see just how good a quality the threading is here. And there's no sharp edges or burrs, and the parts really do screw together beautifully. Now the idea of the two different length tubes is to allow you to use uh, different length batteries. So if you want a good battery life, you can use both tubes together, along with an 18650 battery. If you like your regulated vaping, again, you can use both tubes together, and then you can use an 18500 plus a kick. Or if you want a small, compact and discrete hybrid, you can use the one tube on its own with an 18350 battery. The atomizer section is screwed directly onto the main body. And if I unscrew that, you can see once again, you have a gold plated copper contact and a adjustable screw, which is used for eliminating gaps and battery rattle. The tank is made out of Pyrex glass, holds around three milliliters of e-liquid and is uh, held in position using the hidden O-ring system. And uh, the top cap has a 1.2 millimeter air hole space for your 510 drip tip, and he's held very firmly in place by double O-rings. Inside the top cap, you can see it's actually been sort of uh, chamfered quite heavily inside to make it like a, a reduced chamber. So it's not reduced by much, but reduced nonetheless. And on the atomizer deck, you have your fill hole, a three millimeter wick hole, and then nice simple uh, Phillips head screws for your positive and negative terminals. Okay, so like I said, the Richmond Hybrid can be used with a small 18350 battery, the large 18650 battery, or if you want your regulated vaping, you can use an 18500 plus a kick. Now I've been uh, enjoying it in the small 18350 mode, so I'm going to use an 18350 battery, and my preferred choice are these AWIMRs. So I'm just going to insert the negative ending towards the switch, and then screw the atomizer section onto it. Now as you can hopefully hear, there's uh, quite a bit of battery rattle there, so I need to eliminate that. So I'm just going to unscrew it, and uh, unscrew the uh, adjustable screw a touch. Try it again. 
battery rest all gone. Perfect. Okay, so what I'll do now then is show you how I've been uh, getting my coil set up. Okay, so for my wick, I've been using some 400 stainless steel mesh, and I cut this at a length of 35 millimeters by a width of 20 millimeters, then just uh, rolled it up to form a nice tube and oxidized it by holding it in a hot flame for around sort of 10 seconds or so. And for my wire, I'm going to be using some 0.30 millimeter canthal. Okay, so to save a little bit of time, I've already attached the wire to the negative terminal and inserted the wick. And I like to add a syringe down the center of the wick because I find it helps to strengthen it up and makes it a little bit easier when it comes to wrapping the coils. So what I'm going to do now then is just wrap sort of four or five coils and then finish it off by trapping it underneath the, uh, the screw there on the positive terminal. And then once it's all tightened up, you can just uh, play around with the coils a little bit, make them look a little bit neater. And then hopefully what you should end up with is something that looks a bit like that. And to remove the excess wire, you can use cutters, but I like to just apply a bit of tension, give it a twist, and it should snap off nice and clean. Okay, so before adding any e-liquid to the tank, it's very important to first make sure that all your coals are going to light up evenly and at the same time. Now, I've just done a little test fire. I can see that uh, I've got a few hot spots. So what I'm going to do is the older pulse technique. And so I'm just going to sort of keep on uh, tapping the button there. Then after a while, the uh, pulsing should hopefully oxidize the problem areas and uh, get rid of the uh, little short circuits. So I'm just going to start pulsing. If after, sort of, say, 10 seconds or so, it doesn't uh, make any difference, I'm just going to get a little screwdriver out, give the coils a nudge, just to sort of help them on their way. Okay, so I'll start pulsing and see what happens. And as far as I can tell, that seems to be okay. Okay, so now with the coals are lighting up nicely, I'm just going to take the syringe and fill the tank up with some e-liquid. Give that a second or two for the capillary action to start working. We should get some vapor. Right, so all that's left to do now is attach the top cap. And uh, like with all Genesis atomizers, just make sure the air hole goes directly in front of the wick. It goes on like that. Won't be drip tip in the end, and it's all ready to go. Okay, so that is the Richmond Hybrid. Let's go ahead, see what it vapes like. Okay, so that was the Richmond Hybrid. And what I'll do now is go ahead and show in action. So I'm going to use it in the small mode with the 18350 battery. The battery came off the charger around sort of 20 minutes ago. I have been having a bit of a vape with a cup of tea. So it's probably dropped down to around sort of 3.94 volts by now. I've not bothered to measure the resistance of the coil, but I'm going to take a guess it's quite low, probably around sort of 0.9 to 1 ohms. And I've got a tank filled up with some 18 milligram strength tobacco flavoured e-liquid, and it's a 80-20 mix of PG and VG. Okay, so this is the Richmond Hybrid. So as you can see, like vapor-wise, getting plenty of vapor out of it. Like I always say, just bear in mind that the amount of vapor you're going to get will be totally down to how you've actually got it set up 
with regards to the resistance of the coil, the type of coil you're going to use, whether you're using a PG or VG based e-liquid, etc, etc. But nevertheless, with a separate coil here, getting plenty of vapour, flavour and throw hip. The uh, temperature of the vapour is um, lukewarm, is how, uh, how I would uh, sort of best describe it. It's not a uh, hot vapour, it's definitely not a cold vapour, you've just got a, a slight bit of, sort of warm temperature there. If I was going to say one was really cold, five was really hot, it's probably around the uh, sort of two mark. Now you could um, make it slightly warmer or cooler by sort of changing the resistance of the coil. If you want a slightly warmer vape, uh, lower the resistance. If you want a slightly cooler vape, uh, increase the resistance. It won't make a, a massive amount of difference, but uh, should hopefully make a slight difference anyway. Um, the drawer, now I've got other atomizers with the same size air hole and uh, this for some reason just feels a little bit looser compared to those ones, not like a massive amount of difference but it definitely feels a touch looser compared to those. So I would say this is more of a loose drawer than a tight drawer, if I was going to say one was really loose, five was really tight, again probably around sort of two, something like that, you know it's quite loose but you do have that little bit of resistance there as you're actually inhale, inhaling. Um, ease of setup, for me it's a nice easy one to get going, you've got your Phillips head screws on there, most houses have got a uh, Phillips head screwdriver somewhere in the drawer so nice easy access to the proper tool to use. Uh, you've got plenty of room to, uh, to manoeuvre, like with any Genesis atomizer though, once you've wrapped your coils you probably will have to sort of uh, fiddle about a little bit to get rid of your hot spots but I do find that the, uh, the old pulsing technique, just give it a few pulses, you know, for say 10 15 seconds if it still doesn't work just get a screwdriver out give the coils a little slight nudge up or down just like one or two of the coils and normally nine times out of ten when you go to uh, press the button again they'll start working so um, it really is a very very good technique so like with any, any Genesis atomizer you are going to have to sort of uh, play about a little bit to get it going properly and all the coils lighten up evenly and at the same time but in terms of actually wrapping your coils you've got plenty of room to manoeuvre there so for me anyway a nice easy one to get going. You may be noticing that I'm getting a slightly more vapour than what I normally get. That's not because I've done a major difference sort of, um, what's it called, a, a coil on there or resistance or anything like that. I'm still doing a fairly sort of similar setup to how I normally do, but I have got that little bit of VG in there. And as you can probably tell, it does make the vapour a little bit sort of thicker and denser. So now if you do want sort of thicker and denser vapour, and the VG really does uh, hit the spot. In case anyone's wondering why I've suddenly changed from an all PG to a, a mix, it's just that uh, this is a tobacco flavour I mixed up myself using some uh, Cubana concentrate and a really nice vape that is. Uh, with regards to battery life, obviously if you're going to use it with the 18350 battery, if you're a very light user you can probably make that battery last you all, the day, all day long sort of quite comfortably. If you're a chain vapour, you're probably going to go through a handful of those batteries a day. For me, I would say I'm a, I wouldn't say I'm, a, I'm not a chain vapour, I would say I'm moderate to fairly heavy. And I'm probably going through probably around sort of two and a half to three of those 18350 batteries a day. If you are a particularly heavy vapour, obviously the 18650 battery is going to be the, uh, the logical choice. And uh, for me, I can get sort of pretty much a full day's worth of good quality vaping out of an 18650 battery. And for those people who like the older regulated vaping, you can use the kick in there as well. So I know that will please a lot of people. The um, switch is brilliant. It works exceedingly well. There's um, hardly any throw there, what's throw there whatsoever. It's probably about a millimetre. The actual tension of the spring for me is perfect. You know, you just got that sort of slight sort of spongy feel to it and I like that personally. 
it's extremely responsive. You can press it right on the very edge, it's going to fire up. You can press it right in the middle, it's going to fire up. And uh, if you can also stand it upright without locking it, and the actual tension of the spring is enough to uh, stop it from firing. Only sort of slight negative for me is the locking ring, but only the aesthetics, the actual performance of the locking ring. At the moment, it's uh, open. Now it's locked. Open. Lock. So it literally just takes a spin of the thing. Spin. I can't get me THs and Fs out tonight. It takes a spin of the finger to uh, lock it or unlock it. So in that sense, you know, the locking ring works absolutely flawlessly. But um, I just think it looks a little bit on the ugly side. I don't like the fact that it does sort of chamfer out at the bottom there. I think I would prefer it if it was sort of more flush with the uh, with the rest of the body. And especially when it's in a locked position, you do get quite a nasty old uh, sort of gap there. Um, but that's only a really a, a pretty minor criticism though because the switch works perfectly and the locking ring is exceedingly good at doing its uh, job of locking or unlocking it. You know, I really can't really sort of fold that at all. So it's just the aesthetics of the locking ring which I'm not overly keen on. Build quality. Um, is excellent really, especially when you consider the price. I think it's $124 or in UK money, I'm going to take a guess, that's around sort of 80, 85 pounds. And so for 85 quid, now you're getting a stainless steel hybrid, uh, which can use uh, different length batteries, it's kit compatible, it's uh, nice and easy to set up, it performs really well. Um, you've got an excellent switch on there as well, the machine of the parts is now, I can't complain about them at all. You know, the parts screw together really nice and smoothly. There's no sort of grinding or, or biting or anything like that. You know, you lock the two together, give it a spin, and that's it. You know, they're done up nicely. So for £85, I think that's uh, quite the bargain, really. Now, I know there's the iHybrid Pure, which is also like another sort of budget uh, Genesis hybrid, but that's made out of aluminium. And for me personally, I'd always go for a stainless steel. So to get a stainless steel Genesis hybrid with all those options, at a price of £85, I think that really is uh, absolutely fantastic. The only thing I really wish I had done is send me out one in either all matte or all polished because the mixture of the two that they sent out looks absolutely hideous in uh, my opinion. I don't like it whatsoever. And uh, I really would like to be able to say to you, look at that, it looks fantastic as well for the price. But uh, because of the uh, the mixes of the finishes, it just uh, I just can't say that because it just doesn't look nice, unfortunately. I want to stress though, and I do really, really want to stress, it's not going to come like this. You either have a choice of the matte finish or the polished, and I'm assuming they sent it out like this to uh, show you guys the two different finishes. I think it would have been a lot better for them to sort of showcase their product as well if they sent it out in a complete finish and then maybe just added an extra tube of the other finish. I can say, look, this is how it looks, or you can have it all like that, uh, but in this finish. You know, I think that would have been the, uh, the better idea. So it's nothing to do with the product as such. It's more to do with Richmond Vapors uh, sending out one of uh, Frankenstein's creations. So um, that's literally the only sort of slight negative I've got to say about it. But that doesn't actually uh, concern the product anyway, really. Because like I said, the actual finish when you receive it, it'll either be all matte or all polished, depending on obviously what you choose. So, um, you know, it would have been nice to show you like uh, how it looked properly. But uh, other than that, though, you know, for £85, you're getting a really good quality device and uh, one that sort of uh, vapes and uh, performs really nicely as well. As you can see. Okay, so not too sure what else I can tell you about. If you fancy try one out for yourself, go along to www.richmondvapors.com. Thank you very much for watching. Also, come along and visit my website at www.esigreviews.com. That's e-sig-reviews.com. Cheers guys, happy vaping, see you later.